Make sure you watch uh, or, or check out Nate's video blog. Please <laughs> watch it. This is please. What's happening right now. He's the new thing. Don't that teach drugs. <laughs> Follow your dreams. Look, at, I'm John Cena today. I am on uh, PG. This is really tight. How do I look? Okay. You look great, Cena. Now, now get in the ring. It's funny because AJ Styles wears this around his head, where uh, John Cena wore it around his arm. I thought that was hilarious when he walks out into wrestling with it. Going off track, we're just kind of you know warming up a little bit. But today, the objective of today, first we're going to talk about the thrift store. I call it the thrift store apocalypse, really, because it's it's been really tough for retro gamers. So we've kind of had to branch out to other things. Do you agree, Noah? Absolutely. I mean, I graduate. I've graduated to toys for sure. Comics are still very undervalued. Don't you dare drive up those prices. No, uh, we'll we'll get into it as we go. Uh, I got to show some pickups as we talk about it as well. Uh, some toy pickups, and we're going to end it with a Q and A. Well, kind of a Q and A. I'm asking you the Power Rangers expert, about the upcoming movie, everything that like a casual fan like myself might need to know, you seem to know. I have been following this movie since it was announced, really. Because this is pretty exciting. It the, is. This so is like I've, a Power Rangers movie since 1997. It will so have been 20 years. Did you grow up like I did and get banned from recess because you were playing putties in Power Rangers? No, it was more Dragon Ball Z and Knights of the Zodiac that got us in trouble. I'm sure you've noticed in your short time on this earth, Noah, that for retro video game collectors, the thrift store has really been difficult, I'll say. It ain't what it used to be, man. Golden years when I started going was, I was 17, that would make you 7 years old. <laughs> I'm so old. Um, I was watching Digimon on YTV in the zone. Jeez, with Snit and PJ Phil. Please, watch it, please. This is what's happening right now. He's the new thing. Don't that teach drugs. <laughs> Follow your dreams. I'm so old. I think I'm mine old. was uh, Sugar and Carlos. <laughs> is it that girl who had that really high, like, Yeah, she did voice? the boy for Mini Moon, too. What's up, everybody? It's here. My last day has arrived. What's going on, everybody? I'm from Maui, and I love to take my cat to the dog park on Sunday mornings in my bikini. In case people don't know, I have an interview with PJ Phil on our channel. I'll link it in the description below. The OG Canadian babysitter. It's funny because he, you know, he's so wholesome when you watch him growing up. And when we interviewed him, he's talking about drugs and like <laughs> money and women and stuff. It was hilarious. Did I ever tell you when like he had a Q and A session there, and like everyone's asking him, "Oh, what happened here? Do you remember this?" And then there goes me. You ever hook up with anyone on uh, YTV there, PJ Phil? Yeah. You ever <laughs> have it? Any of the female PJs? <laughs> well, PJ Jen maybe. But now, like, if you if you're like a retro video game collector, the last place you'd probably want to go nowadays is the thrift store. Do you agree? Oh yeah, especially the Valueless Village. Valueless Village hashtag it. Get it trending, baby. But like the same way how like the thrift store started my retro video game collecting. Um, toys. I've gotten into toys because that's one of the very undervalued things at the thrift store. And you buy toys at the thrift store, don't you, Noah? Oh, I've been buying toys at the thrift store since I was a youngin. That's my mom would take me to Value Village all the time, man. Because you know we we couldn't afford brand new toys all the time, so you know I learned to be thrifty very early on, and I appreciate that. That's why you are the next generation of thrift dwellers, sir. Two ninety nine. At Value Village. I'll keep the camera on me right now and Noah can fill me in on some of these toys. All right, let's see what you got. Who's this guy, Noah? That looks like uh, the two dudes from Milan. That's Mr. Potato Head. The main reason for this bag $2.99 at Value Village. Oh, it's Naw. What's it his name? Shark his name is Naw, spelled G N A W. He is the Sharkticon from G One. Is he in the movie? He is in the movie. Because every time I see him, I think of that song "Dare to Be Stupid." Oh yeah, yeah good old. But I don't even know if he was in that scene. 
No, that was the scene with the Junkions. They were fighting on planet Junk. Look at that face! Look at him, what do you think? I think he, he deserves a spot in every Transformer fans collection. Two ninety nine for this guy at Valley Village, minus 30% off. And look, the stickers are still in good condition. He's got his chrome. None I think he's missing a tail, though. Off. Yeah, he's missing the tail, but ah, details. Pretty Important. dope, right? I know. That's so cool. I'm, I'm very talking. happy with this, man. Two ninety nine has, like, the, uh, you know, I call these mood stickers. Like, you touch them, oh, yeah, and they're the, like... I think they're officially known as, like, the rub signs. The rub signs? Yeah, you rub a Transformer. Kind of disturbing when you think about it as an adult. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm but sorry I was I'm watching. Toys at the thrift store are one of those things that I think are very undervalued. And I don't know if they can even control toys because there's so much toys there. I like oh, video cool. games, right? Because they just, if it's a video game, it goes in the video game pile, automatically like priced up. But toys, there's so many toys, they can't sift through all that stuff. You see, that's the thing about toys. There's just, there's an infinite amount, and the valuable ones, no one has any idea what they really are. Well, look at, this was in, like, they grouped these together. I don't know what their criteria is for grouping toys together. I mean, that's a great find. Speaking of which, it's the 30th anniversary of that movie this year. It's getting a Blu-ray release. Star Trek turned 50 today. I know, it's crazy. The Super Nintendo was 25 this year. I know. Wow. Is it, is 25 too? Is it really? I think he is. That's yeah, it's the 25th anniversary. But like, I was just thinking about it the other day. The thrift store, I, I really have no motivation to go anymore. Because yeah. I, if I find a gem, you know it's going to be forty nine ninety nine or something like that. But oh, I'm down. Toys get me out of the bed in the morning to go to the thrift store. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I found this guy at Value Village for, uh, in a bag for... They're three ninety nine. He's missing one of his toes. But the swords look suspicious, you know. Noah. Yeah, I, he didn't have his swords either, so I made replacements. Just because I just have a bunch of toy accessories flying around. So, would you agree with the statement that if you want to be successful and ball out at the thrift store, you can't be a video game collector anymore? You gotta like change your focus. You think so? Change your focus to something like that. Yeah, maybe even like uh, I don't know. Wall art. I see a lot of wall art at Value Village. Oh, How about God. movies? Movies are great at the thrift store. Very undervalued. That's another thing that gets me out of the bed in the morning to go to the thrift store. Movies, two ninety nine minus thirty percent off for all the movies I'm going to show right now. I Logan's love, Run. I love my physical media. You know that. I'm all about the DVDs and the VHS and the Blu-rays. Oh, is it one of those double-sided ones? Yeah. I, I don't like those though. Oh, you don't like them either. They're so they're so hard to clean. Yeah, well, it's here. If you uh -huh. want to be successful at the thrift store, whatever your definition of success is, DVDs. There are a lot of, I will say, out of print DVDs that never made it to Blu-ray. Yeah, I think that's really worth looking up. Lester would be all over that. We'll talk to him about it in the podcast. But Lester, I know he loves his disc-based media. Look at that one, Noah. The Batman movie. We were just talking about this the other day, remember? When we were out at the thrift store? I know. This is like one of the best Batman movies ever. I, I saw it on Netflix, and I forgot how much I really liked it. You know what I mean? Oh, well, I, I saw it before as a kid. I used to play it on PBS nonstop, you know? Wow, PBS. Yeah, Channel 3. Playing the Batman movie. Look at that. I know, that's so cool. I was. This is a really good movie. It's campy. I don't think a lot of people understand this movie was... Or this whole Batman series was supposed to be campy. Well, it was set during the 60s, and that was when the Silver Age was going on, and comics themselves were outlandishly ridiculous, more so than usual. Would you say the Batman show saved Batman franchise? It certainly brought him into the public limelight, that's for sure, because a lot of people throughout the 70s and until the 89 movie, they only thought of Batman from the 60s show. If you weren't a comic reader, that's how you knew Batman back then. Honestly, that's probably my first exposure to Batman, I think, is that Adam West show. Or was it the animated series? I think mine might have been Batman the Animated Series. Yeah, because that's when you were, like, that came out when I was closer to grade seven, I think. Fantastic show. If you haven't seen it, what's wrong with you? I have to finish it. 
It was on Netflix. I think they took it down, though. Yeah, they took it down because they're jerks. But they uh, did the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, which I have been watching. And is that on it. Netflix? Shut up. Yeah, it's on Netflix. The All 90s? Movies. Yeah, 94 Spider-Man. Oh, my. I live for that show. Oh, it's no, that, that was Venom was? Yeah, the first animated appearance of Venom, voiced by Hank Azaria, who's also better known as Mo Sislak on The Simpsons. I had no idea what you just said, but Mo Sislak, yeah! Oh, boy. But, like, uh, the whole point of showing these movies was the first store, two of the most undervalued things, toys and movies. So, I don't know if that helps anyone out there. I'm pretty sure if you go to the third store, you know that already. I mean, heck, sometimes I go just to see what the movies are. Yeah, I almost some never VHS go. tapes, too. I almost never go expecting, oh, there will be some good game deals. I'm like, there's not going to be good game deals. I don't go, like, if there's a great game there, yay, but that's not the reason I went into the thrift store. I was going because of movies and toys. That's pretty much why I go. That, and I check to see if there's comics or manga and stuff. Yeah, I do the comic look, too. Like, I'm not an expert, but I just buy things that I kind of want to read, you know? Yeah, me too. Anyways, I got some more movies here. Um, look at that. Four Superman movies for oh, $2.99. Yeah. I mean, mine it's 30% off, by the way. I know. I paid $11 for mine from Superstore. Oh, what do you think? Because you work at a DVD place. Four movies. Four Superman movies. That's a good co- And only two of those movies are really worth it, but still. Oh, uh, no. If you got, what is it? Are you going to say the first two? Noah? Christopher Reeves, the first two Superman movies, they were my introduction to Superman, and they're still like the standard for me. For well, Superman. they are. Like, Man of Steel didn't really do that well. You know what? I, I had a better time watching it the second time around, because I was, me and my friend had a marathon. Man of Steel back-to-back with uh, Batman v Superman. Okay, here's another pickup from the thrift store. two ninety nine minus 30% off. An entire season of Married with Children. I know this this show that was so controversial. That's crazy to think this this really effed up my childhood. My dad would not let me watch this. Uh, for me, it was what was it? I wasn't allowed to watch Family Guy as a kid, but I did anyway. Or wow, so. Family Guy was out when you were a kid. I know it's crazy. What is wrong with me? But look at Kelly Bundy right there. Also, the voice of uh, Leela on Futurama. Oh no, what? Uh, that's no, Kelly. no, that that's. Katie Siegel. Oh, sorry. I'm. I don't really know much about Married with Children. I never really watched it. So I love this. There was a, there was an episode with Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Lester didn't know that. A Kelly lot of actresses in, were on this show. Sorry. Kelly Kapowski was on there. She was. No and way. A dog ripped off her towel and she was tied to lockers naked. That's awesome. <laughs> That's Kelly Bundy for you. You don't mess with a Bundy. Oh man. Bear to Children was so good. Uh, I remember when, like, the neighbors, Steve Rhodes, left, and then Darcy came. That was awesome. Watch Bear to Children. It'll screw you up. <laughs> what else did I get? I got this movie, VHS Tapes, 99 cents. With Stallone. Look at it. It says Rocky, Rambo, Cobra, and now. And now. What does it say? The oh. biggest fight of his life. A fucking arm wrestling tournament. That's actually a legitimately good movie, though. People are wondering, like Lester and stuff, why do I buy VHS tapes? And it was kind of like the AVGN thing. This is like what I grew up watching it on. This was the format. So this is what I want to own it as, right? And, and just look at that cover art. It's a book. Who gives a frick right now, right? Just look at him. He's like, oh, you're look the at, arm of Stallone. Look at the back there. He's like arm wrestling a guy. He lo- he's 100 pounds Lighter than that guy, obviously. And look at the cover. You got Stallone with a, what is that, an eagle behind him? Yeah, a truck. Like a, a pickup truck? Is he, he got punching? a wrap on his arm? Or is he stopping the pickup truck with his fist? I, I'm pretty sure his fist is stopping the pickup truck. You're absolutely right there. Only Sly Stallone could pull that off. I mean, Chuck <sighs> Norris, if he stopped the truck with his fist, it would just explode into a million pieces. Did you know but one Sly time... Uh, no, one time Chuck Norris had sex in his pickup truck. Did you know about that? No, what happened? Well, some of his semen got on the seat. Later on, that truck came to be known as Optimus, Optimus Prime. Prime. <laughs> 
three ninety nine minus thirty percent off right there. You see that? Oh, nice. That is uh, that's two thousand seven movie prime. Oh, look at Noah. I didn't get to transform him there, but I thought for essentially four bucks with no tax, this is a pretty cool transformer to pick up. It was thirty percent off. I think I mentioned I that already. I know you get a lot of action figure here for the price. I don't know if I want to transform him there too. What's that? Sorry. A lot of posability, his articulation. But if you compare the two, though, like this, people rag on these ones for having like plastic joints or blah blah blah. This was pretty plasticky too. And a, a lot of G1 toys were kind of bricks. Like, for example, I'll pull out Soundwave here. All he can do is really move his arms. He can't really move his legs, his head, and that's it. I bet you a lot of action people, action figure people from the community would say those are some pretty loose joints. No. Yeah, this is a this is a long time. This was my first Transformer toy actually when I was like three. But I'm comparing the two, and this I is mean, not too bad, man. Long. Sorry, I'm impressed he survived this long. Hopefully, he'll survive to be played with by my possible future children. I don't know. Well, you better get on uh, doing what it takes to make <laughs> children. Not me. Your your Tito Nate is here to help you. What do you want to learn, Noah? How to pick up a nerdy girl. Like oh, jeez. Well, that'll be our new show on Thrift Dweller. We will how teach to pick up nerdy girls. Noah how to pick up. We will document your whole. We'll like take you to the store, Moors, get you a suit, <laughs> teach you how to drive in my car. But anyways, no, I was saying comparatively. People rag on the new generation of Transformers. This ain't too bad. I don't know. What's your opinion on the two? You know, with the G1, there's a certain there's a classical charm about it with, like, the, the colors and the die cast and just the limited posability and everything. There's, like, it's where Transformers began. And for me, that's very important to never forget where they came from. Have you seen, like, the, the Masters Collection stuff, though? Well, the masterpieces are fantastic. They're expensive as hell, but they're fantastic. I really think it's lowered the prices of like the G1 Transformers. I'm seeing a lot of these pop up now, you know, at the thrift store and things like that, where there wasn't many of them before. So I'm thinking oh, yeah. a lot of collectors are letting go of their G1s, which is unfortunate because they're still good toys, in my opinion. Yeah, but, but they need uh, to sell these to make money to buy the masterpiece collection. Exactly. And they've, they've been constantly reimagining characters like that in the newer lines. Like, we have Combiner Wars, and now we have Titans uh, Return, which is basically just a line of headmasters. You know, when I first started going to the thrift store, Noah, there was quite a bit of Transformers that I didn't pick them up. You're kind of wishing you did now? A lot of, even games I left behind, because I only had 20 bucks. And I can, I only need 10 games, or they're a dollar a piece, or whatever. I'll leave yeah. Wario's Woods behind, you know? Like, why did <laughs> I do that? Uh, is, it, is it worth on price charting now, like, 10 bucks? I ball come for 50 cents. Yeah. I, I should have just picked up all 20 games that were there, right? Hey, maybe right now you have a complete set of NES. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't understand that whole completionist thing. Like, I get it for some people, but for me, I just want the games that I want. That's Ooh, it. that's... Is this officially shots fired? And Michael be the game genie? Oh no no no, he's cool. I don't, I don't get why he's collecting all those games too, Noah. You're absolutely right. I, Wait I up. Start the I, the first shot against Michael B the game genie. Good for hey, you. Hey, hey, I got nothing against the game genie. Dude's dude's a total bro. Sorry, you cut out there for a second. All I heard was beef with him. I got no beef. Like Michael B the game genie. He's a total bro. <laughs> we love Michael B the game genie. Canada, Team Canada. This is our logo. Gotta stick together. See, this is half of a maple leaf. Ah, I get it. So I, so I show people this Team Canada. We're going to start awesome. this on Thrift Dollar right now. Anyways, the rest of the movies that I picked up from the thrift store. Kaido Maru. You ever hear about that? I've heard of it, but I have not seen it. It looks very familiar, and I didn't want to leave it behind. It was two ninety nine minus 30% off. It's a manga. It's a, it's a, it's a Japanese animated series. Blood, the Last Vampire. What is that? You ever watch that? Oh, I have seen a bit of that. It's uh, pretty gruesome, from what I remember. Cool. Maybe not Ghost in the Shell gruesome, but still. Uh, I picked up quite a bit of Ghost in the Shell DVDs too. I gotta, I gotta start watching that. 
Another one I picked up, Vincent Price in The Pit and the Pendulum. Oh, Vincent Price. You can't go wrong, man. I, you know, this is from the Winnipeg Public Library, so it probably passed through a lot of hands, but I really want to up my movie knowledge, my movie game, because it's one of the things I loved growing up was going to the video store. Have you ever seen one of those, Noah, a rental store? Dude, I used to go to Roger's Video ever since I was like five, maybe even four. So you were there for the tail end of the video stores, huh? I was there when they came into DVDs and stuff. You have to remember, in my era, Noah, we used to have mom and pop rental stores before they all got overtaken oh. by blockbusters and stuff like that. When I was a kid on McLeod Avenue, before it was a chicken place, there was a mom and pop store called Take Three Video. <laughs> before it was a chicken place. <laughs> now it's like a chicken delight or something. I don't know. Oh my God. Anyways, movie. Yes, this is from Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe uh, writing, I guess. They, they made a movie out of it. That's Very actually interesting. What's that? That's, a good, one. That's a, good, a good horror movie. What do you think about two ninety nine minus thirty percent off? Yes, that is excellent. Turtles this forever. Is, I this made me want to watch the new iteration of Turtles. If people don't know, this is like the mixture. They went through every iteration of the Turtles from the classic nineties cartoon that I grew up with, the two thousand three one that I grew up with, and the comic one which came out before my time. I know, the original Mirage comics, which, by the way, were super violent. They, they killed Shredder in the first issue. They killed... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did I ever tell you? I found a bunch of... Uh, I think from issue 3 to issue 30 of the original Ninja Turtles uh, comic books, a complete run of okay. them at the thrift store, but one and two were missing. <sighs> That's but another still, good point. Comics are very undervalued at the thrift store. Do you agree? Oh, definitely. It's a great, it's a great place to pick up comics. Uh... Be careful, though. Some of them might not be in the best condition. But if they're if they're readable, like if they don't crumble in your hands, I'd say they're worth ninety nine cents. Well, that's a that's the whole thing about like defining your your vision of what success is at the thrift store. I buy comic books because I want to read them. So if I read them, success. People like, are hey, trying to find right, they look cool. Success. Yeah, I'm trying to find Spider Man number one at the thrift store. <laughs> they know what that is at the thrift store. Believe me, they don't. Oh. You're not going to find Amazing Spider-Man number one at the thrift store. But look look how happy I am and how happy you are that we found this. At the that, that's a great movie. I have it too. It's, it's, it's great. I mean, unfortunately, they couldn't get the 80s voice actors back because I believe union disputes. I thought it was still very... I didn't... Well, yeah, I could tell that the voices were the same, but it didn't bother me too much. You know no, what I mean? The writing and the characterization was on point. But yeah, two ninety nine minus 30% off. That is a successful find at the thrift store. Absolutely. You can't go wrong with Turtles. Two ninety nine minus thirty percent off for the complete first season. Urkel. I used and to I call the show the that. Urkel Show. <laughs> Look at that. It's the first season of Family Matters, two ninety nine at the thrift store. Urkel was also the voice of Sonic in the cartoons. Jaleel White, yes. He's Jaleel. also uh playing Billy in the next Power Rangers movie, I think. <laughs> I don't think that's Jaleel White. <laughs> we will get to Power Rangers after this. I don't know why I picked this up. I think it's because this is how I watched the movie. It was a rental from Wizards ah, Video. Old Dragon movie. So I, good. It's so bad. If I know. I think if I find this on Blu-ray or something, I'll get rid of it. I don't think I'll get rid of this. But it was good. It be a Blu-ray release. So I don't think there's enough demand for that movie. On the, <laughs> I don't know. It's got to be on DVD, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. They have Street Fighter on DVD movie. Do you know what this guy, was his name? Mark Wolf? Was that his name or something like that? I think. And I forget this guy's name all the time. I don't even care. Or Jimmy Lee. Well, he was good. If you ever watched uh, Stargate Atlantis, he was on there. I was but, never into Stargate. I was more like uh, Star Wars and a bit of Battlestar Galactica as a, as a kid. Anyways, another <laughs> another pickup from, this is from Giant Tiger. It's 10 bucks. The Giant Tiger. second season of Xena. Zena, Lucy Lawless. Mm. Leather. This is a Saturday morning cartoon show. Or with the Saturday morning cartoons. But it was good. I love that show. Did you watch that growing up? I watched it I watched it a lot. It was her and Buffy. I had a big crush on Lucy Lawless. And then it became uh, whoever who played Gabrielle. I, I, I never liked it after that a while. On Lucy Lawless. Renee O'Connor, that's her name. Still, still. Both of them. Very good show. Love Xena. She's like the, uh, 
she's like Wonder Woman almost in a way. Yeah, without all the super superpowers, I guess. But oh, yeah, she's an Amazon queen of the Amazons, really. Speaking of which, Wonder Woman movie next year, looking good. We're going to be talking about that, how it's probably going to kill the Power Rangers. Uh, <laughs> for you, one. Noah. Oh, FTR thank you. hookup. You needed uh, DVD cases, right? Yes, I, I never thought that I would have so many loose disc games in my collection, but I just stumble into them sometimes. Two ninety nine minus thirty percent off. These are all yours, bud. You are a true, true friend. So to sum it all up, from those pickups, to be successful at the thrift store, you have to kind of shift your perception of what perception perception of what success is at the thrift store. Not, you know, if you find a rare game, great. Yeah, if you don't, it's gonna be hard. There are some days I go to the thrift store and I find nothing. Well, actually, the thrift store, I kind of, uh, what's it called? I don't collect video games anymore. I know a lot of people are getting heavy into it, like Ian is. and I never went the eBay route. I never went the Kijiji route. I was mostly thrift store and just kind of friend connections. And yeah. I got a lot of my video game collection done already. I got everything I ever wanted. So there's no point for me to go to the thrift store anymore. I really anything. Exactly. Oh, I should just sell this all to you. eBay is like for imports. Imports. If you want to be successful in the retro video game market, get imports, I think, before they go really high. They're already getting expensive. But Oh, boy. Better set up a PayPal account. Speaking of... Feeling, they're going to raise up. They're going to go higher than they are now. Going back to uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for a second, I picked this guy up. He talks at the Moby Flea Market. It's Hothead from the, uh, the original but, toy line. Was he in the cartoon? I think he might have been for like a brief second. I think he was he was a character in the tournament fighters game for NES. Oh you know, yeah. Watch his gimmick. What happened? His neck just come out? Yep. That that's the whole point of that toy. But look that's at this. Look, look, at, look at the paint detailing. Look at that. It's beautiful. All I wish I could find a lot of Ninja Turtles at the thrift store. No, I really do. Ah, uh, yeah. I think people scoop them up. There was one day I was at the thrift store, and I should have picked up. There was a whole bunch of Marvel and Turtles figures. I should have got them, but I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't big into toy collecting back then. Oh, my God. yeah, well, I think that sums it up pretty much about the thrift store. It's not like the era is gone. You just got to shift focused. Mm -hmm. Any tips for the people, Noah? I would say... The reason you should be going to the thrift store is not to find something valuable that you can flip for money. It should, you should be going because you enjoy it and because you enjoy what you collect. Well put, my friend. Well put. It's, it's about the thrill of the hunt, not the profit. <laughs> we'll be shifting away from the thrift store talk. Uh, yeah, the thrift store is dead, basically. Moving on. Uh, I said it before, I'm kind of like a casual Power Rangers fan. I grew up with it, though.